Let's say you have a goal, you know what you want to practice, you know some of the things that will get you there, you are practicing them, and then something derails you or something gets stuck and you don't realize what one of the ingredients are. You don't know exactly where to go next. Well, this idea of quality practice is something I talk about on my channel so much because if we learn this as our main skill, we can learn anything. We can practice anything. So in this video, I'm going to answer a question that someone wrote in in the comments on a video that I posted recently that was called the Practice Priority Pyramid. It was very uh, helpful for myself, at least a framework for practicing and improving the quality of our practice, the enjoyment of our practice, and certainly the results that we get. So I shared it on the channel. There will be a link to that video in the description if you want to watch it. I think it's extremely helpful and other people are finding it helpful. And someone wrote in a question uh, that I think a lot of other people, a lot of us, myself included, can struggle with. So I want to read the question, give my answer, and then I will share with you some actual uh, kind of case study examples, if you will, from my own playing, from my own practicing, like stuff that I'm working on like yesterday and today, and then how I am solving this problem, how I'm finding a solution uh, through these issues of trying to practice something, hoping for a certain result, and having trouble with kind of getting through certain plateaus. So that being said, let's dive into it. On this video that I posted just a few days ago, they said, Hi, Jared, love your videos. I have a question. So for example, I set my goal as being able to improvise because in that video that they commented on, um, a big part of the framework is at one portion in the framework, we actually set our goals. We want to know why are we doing this? Let's figure out what our goals are in playing and then we can find a path to get there. So they said, let's say I define my path um, or let's say I set my goal as being able to improvise. Then the next step in the framework is defining your path. Then I define my path like, let's say, the analysis of progressions to work out scale options. Excellent. Working on scales in different positions. Yes, of course. Moving through positions. Excellent. Maybe isolate some changes with a looper. Fantastic. These are all great things to practice. A little ear training to try to play what it pops in my head. Awesome. All that stuff is spot on. And then they said, but then I often find that my technique lets me down. Like I can't play fast enough for what I want, or I fluff a bit. I want to sweep or my right hand lets me down if I'm string skipping or uh, trying to do synchronization. So then still, I'm kind of paraphrasing, but then the quote goes on. So I think, okay, I need to work on my technique. And that derails me from the path. Feels like a better use of my time to get the technique right. And then the final part of the question is, how do you fit this all together? I was kind of paraphrasing because there was a couple typos in there, but you get the picture, you get what is being asked here. And I do think a lot of us uh, can find ourselves in this same boat. That final question, how do you fit this all together? So I'm going to give you my general answer and talk about it in a couple ways. And then, of course, give you my real time, kind of how I practice and what I'm practicing right now and how I deal with it. My general answer is that technique... There's no reason that technique is a ingredient in some other category than these other things that were listed, right? Moving through positions, practicing scale options, ear training. Why is technique separate from all of those other things, right? Technique is needed to execute anything. Technique is so, you know, it's not a fun topic. I talk about it a lot and I work on it a lot because technique is our kind of portal to anything we actually actually want to play in real life, in real time, in, in the physical world, we have to have some kind of technique to execute what we want. And so even if we would just want pure artist inspiration, okay, well, technique is going to be in the way if we don't work on that a little bit some way or another. So technique is simply part of the same path. It's not a separate path. It's not a separate item, right? So, okay, define my goal. I want to improvise and then lay out my, uh, lay out my path for myself, this, 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 this checklist of things. And then the, the issue was, well, then I often find that technique is in the way. Well, technique is just on that list too. And maybe this seems like an obvious answer, but I'm going to go deeper on it so we really see how, how we workshop these things. But just know, like, of course, technique is on the list, maybe high on the list for a lot of us, because we, especially people learning online on YouTube, usually very smart people like yourself, like learning, absorbing things, getting concepts down, learning theory. And then I hear all the time that people are saying, oh, I, I know these scale modes and I know about this and I know about that. But then when I play, it doesn't feel good. It doesn't sound like the music I want it to sound like. Well, technique is a big part of that. 
So it's just an ingredient that we need that simply is kind of putting in a certain kind of work. And the big catch here, the big kind of actual takeaway is that that work on the technique does not have to be some separate thing. And in fact, very importantly, it should not be some separate thing. Okay, so your technique work needs to be as in alignment with the goal and the path you're talking about as anything else and as much as possible. So what is the actual technique that is needed to get the thing that you want? What's the flub that happens? Fix that exact flub, fix that exact arpeggio, fix that exact scale slur, fix that exact, you know, slow it down, speed it up and have practice habits for how to work on the technique. Then what you are actually working on is improvisation but you're working on being able to execute the improvisation. So it is a, a perspective shift in a way, but it also is a, how do I do that? What are the tools that I need to be able to do that? So quick analogy, the version of trying to, uh, you know, get our path, get our goal, work towards the thing that we want, um, and then getting derailed into something else thinking, oh, but this thing is missing. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to feel like I'm not even working on the thing I want to get the, see how it doesn't even make sense. You want to be working on the thing you want with the ingredients that get you there. So my analogy is kind of like if you're making a sandwich or a hamburger or something and you have a burger, you have cheese, you have lettuce, you have tomatoes. And you're like, oh, I'm missing bread. Like I need a bun. But instead of a bun, you go get like a baguette or you get croutons, or you get, you know, you get something that is like not the actual thing that's needed for that burger. Like, okay, you need a burger bun. Okay. You don't need, um, some other thinly sliced, you know, wonder bread. You can do that, but then your burger is not going to be what you want. So silly analogy, maybe it doesn't hold up whatever, but you see what I mean? Don't take the ingredient that is separate from the thing that you actually want. Find the most potent, most in alignment thing that you possibly can have. Here's another example. Uh, my neighbor, uh, in my apartment who I just kind of met and hung out with recently, he has a business where he teaches golf fitness, not just fitness, but fitness for golfers specifically. And I checked out some of the videos that he's making and, um, it's very cool. Like the exercises, I saw one where it was like, take a big medicine ball and you practice with it like this way and this way and this way like that. And then saying this specifically strengthens this part of your body and this part of your body that helps with your swing in this way. You see where I'm getting at here? Like it's a specific technique or strength exercise, but it's like directly targeted towards the purpose of the actual goal. It's not like, Hey, you want to be a better golfer, like get fit, go hiking every weekend and you'll be a better golfer. Okay. Well, your cardiovascular system might be better in all these things, but are you going to be a better golfer? So we need to think that way on the guitar. Like what's the technique thing that is going to get us there. So for example, I was working recently on the Super Mario Brothers theme. So silly, right? I was going to do a video on it and I was just playing with it for fun because this is like a, a game sound that is burned into my brain because I was born in the mid eighties and I played this one as a kid. So, uh, okay, that right there, specifically fingers one, two to fingers four, three, is like, I notice it, that's weak, that's breaking apart. What's happening is that they're not coming down at the same time together. Okay, so obviously I could just repeat that. I'm gonna do something called a speed burst where I do it slow, then fast. Slow. And I'm going to do that a bunch. Um, and then I'm also going to, this is one of my favorite things to do is to take anything. If it's from an arrangement, say classical guitar, solo guitar, anything, a lick, whatever you move that to the other strings and you don't care if it sounds weird or anything. So you go. Or any part of it. So I could go. Maybe I need all of that. You got to decide. Okay. Sounds really whack when I go to the next string, but if I do that all over, like here, and it's still not down yet, might do the speed burst and I'm moving it now. Any variety of this. 
This is literally practicing right here, right now, what I need. This is what I need. I'm trying to show you in real time, I practiced this today, and I practiced it a little bit yesterday, and it's improved it already. And the thing about technique in particular, the very hard thing about technique in particular, is that it is a very slow gain because you literally need to gain strength and flexibility and dexterity in your muscle, in your body. This does not happen in one sitting. You do it in one sitting and then you wait for it to heal and get better and you come back and you repeat and you, re you repeat. This is, I think, ear training is very similar to very, very slow gains. I think of it as watering a plant where you do not see it growing while the water's going in. Right? You wait, you wait, you wait, you repeat, you repeat, you repeat. So with technique, it is very much this way. Whereas the things we have down or the things we can do on a technique level, it feels like we can learn a whole song in one sitting. It feels like we can learn a whole new concept in one sitting and feel like we did something that makes improvement because our technique is already there and all we had to do is learn some different collection of notes or, you know, read something or work, you know. But technique is way slower than that. So you have to do this kind of thing. Find a drill. Find something that targets it. Find the problem. Repeat that very slowly, but do it specifically for that solution. Not that I don't do other technique stuff too. I do all kinds of technique exercises and some just to, as a general warm up, which I'll share a PDF uh, about my favorite warm up at the end of the video. But I'm creating a technique solution for that specific spot. So every hairy arrangement spot in any like solo classical guitar piece I've ever played or anything else, I will do it that way. Move it. And you are your own best teacher. What's the way you should do that? Should you do the speed burst where it's slow then fast? Should you just move one time each? Should you do four times each? Do a mixture of those, you know, do it a bunch, test it back out, come back to your original goal over and over, then go workshop it, test it, workshop it, test it, refine what you think you need. I didn't even know that it was specifically the fact that these two fingers weren't coming down at exactly the same time until I tried to solve it and tried a bunch of different things and realized, oh no, it's I don't need to do that, I need to do this, because now I see more clearly what the problem is. So another example for me in improvising right now, there's techniques that I'm working on, like playing with octaves and hybrid picking in a way that is something I call alternate hybrid picking, where I'm alternate picking here and alternate picking with the M and the A finger at the same time. Now this is my improvisation work. So if I have a 12 bar blues, this thing, four bars on B flat seven, and then two bars on E flat seven, then back to B flat seven, and then five chord, four chord, one chord, five chord, and I wanna improvise over that, and I have a little loop of it ready. That's going. And then I want to, say I'm just improvising. And then I switched to my octave thing. And I'm like, whoa, that's really sloppy. Okay, lots of things to do. One, obviously do some stuff that is exclusively this, moving these around, but I'm not just gonna go to, okay, I'm gonna do this technique exercise because in general I need my, my technique. I'm gonna make up a new one that targets exactly what I need. So I'll probably do a little bit of workshopping on this with the backing track going. Can I keep it clean? Can I be relaxed? I'm focusing fully on my technique right now. And then I'm gonna try to speed it up. I'm not even worried about my notes exactly. And it helps me know, okay, where is it breaking apart? Where does it fall apart that I need to work on? Then of course, you can try to combine that with your actual improv. So, okay, now I'm gonna outline the chord tones with this technique that I'm working on. And then I'm gonna outline the next chord. So now you're working on, you know, fretboard mapping out, harmony, you're trying to hear it in your head, you're using your technique. And when your technique falls apart again, you go back to, oh, let me drill that. Slow, fast, clean, can I move this? 
Do I need to do it slower? Now let me try again, back and forth and back and forth. Try to play the real thing. Work on your technique when it falls apart. Use the playing time as actual play time and then take note of the red flags that come up. Ooh, that was a problem. Ooh, that's a limitation. Great, then find the most direct solution to that limitation and then go back and play as soon as possible. Don't go off on a month long practice of this thing that you think was the solution because it might not be the perfect solution. You try, you test it, mm -hmm. then you go back to playing and you let the red flags in real music playing, real music practicing, real working on the targeted goal path. The red flag hits, go try to find a solution to that, work on it a little bit, go back and test it. Okay, so if I'm doing this, I'll do the chord tones. And I'm going to try to do constant chord tones just to see if I can. Nope. Okay, so then I'm like, okay, well that fell apart. I think I need to map these out again a little bit and do it a little slower, etc, etc. It's not like a perfect system all the time. That's why you need to go back and forth and back and forth um, and test it, workshop it, test it, workshop it. Test. Then you're inside your goal. Then you're inside real music playing and then you're going away from the real music playing or the real music practicing to workshop something so specific to woodshed it and then come back to it so very important that you mix it in in that way very important that you're enjoying it as you go because if you're enjoying it by coming back to the real music you're gonna have a positive association and be excited to come back to it again and remember just use those red flags as a moment like oh that's a practice item instead of using what i say to practice as a practice item instead of using what a book says to practice as a practice item which are all good things use your own red flags these own little emergency moments like ooh, in my playing that i in the thing that i'm trying to do for real that was a limitation that's the thing to solve take all this knowledge from videos you're watching from other stuff you're practicing and figure out how to tweak those things into solving exactly what you need. If you do this, you'll make insane progress in your practicing and you'll be your own best teacher and you can use other teachers like myself or anyone else to get more ideas around how to do that and to just be inspired by what to practice next, what to work on and how to solve problems as needed. So the most important thing we can learn is how to design our own practice in this way because then we can bust through anything, have an amazing time doing it, have a lot of fun and you know, get to playing the music that we want to play without feeling stuck for weeks on end, months on end, years on end. So since we're talking about technique, I have a technique warm up that I do every single day. It's the first thing I do when I play guitar. So I call it the best warm up exercise. And I have a free PDF of the entire thing. Um, and it's just so helpful for me when I don't do it. I feel problems in my playing when I do do it. I have a smooth session and things work really well. So I have a PDF of that that you can learn from and there's a video uh, breaking down exactly how it works. There's a link to that PDF in the top of the description. So grab that if you want to, or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash warmup and you can get it there instead. I post a video lesson every single week. I hope you found this helpful. If so, let me know in the comments and hit the uh, like button. I have more videos coming very soon. Make sure you're subscribed. Thanks for watching. Take care and happy practicing.